Hi, I'm Jillian with Big Island Bees, and we're making candles. Uh, we're going to be making beeswax candles at that. So we're going to have our beeswax. We're going to have our mold. We're going to have a needle, wick thread, and then we're going to be using the wick and tying it up on this. And the rubber bands are to hold it together, but we'll get to that. The first things first is you're going to melt your wax. I have that happening back here, so we're good to go. Then you'd filter it. The next thing is you'd go ahead and you'd measure out however much uh, wick you'd want. Um, and you would go to your supplier of the bowl to decide what kind of size. I went to Man Lake, I believe, and I just wrote the size of wicks I needed on this. So you measure it out and you cut it. And then I always leave a long string on it. But yeah, then you're just going to sew it in. It's as easy as that sounds. There's a little hole, push it on through. You could, if you don't have one of these, use a bobby pin and push it on through. There we go. And then we're gonna pull it back. And it's that simple to string your wick. You're gonna tie it up here. And then you're gonna put on your rubber bands. The reason you do rubber bands is it's got a hole right here. So you don't want the wax pouring out. Um, so that's all you have to do. Yeah, and just make sure that seam is nice and seamed up. These don't necessarily have to be flat. That's just me wanting that even. And that's how you set it up. So this is taut, not tight though. I mean, you can see it dangles just a little bit. And then there's more wick. And the reason this is ideal is because then once you get done with this and it's set up, you just pull it through and then you're ready for your next candle so you don't have to restrain your mold every time. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to get your silicone spray release. And so you're just going to spray it in here. Don't spray next to your face. It does not smell pleasant. A little goes a long way so you don't have to do too much and you're all set. So then you would get your wax. Uh, your wax is going to be between the temperatures of 150 and 170 and you pour it right on in. Just a basic shirt for a filter over a canister. Push down a little bit so the wax has somewhere to go. Just pour it on in. So there we have our wax in the canister. I like this one because it has a little pouring tip on the tip of it so it actually goes where I want it. You could do it into a bucket, but you run into the, the problems of the bucket pouring other various locations. And just because I always pour a little extra, I'm going to go ahead and make extra blocks. I'm going to spray these as I'm waiting for the temperature to come down. go. It's about good. So yeah, you're just going to make sure that this is about middle. Your little tail end is sticking up, not down, because otherwise it gets in the bottom of your candle and isn't as pretty as you want it to be. You just slowly pour. If you go too fast, you'll get little bubbles. Not ideal. And you just pour it to the rim. You can see it's over there. And that's it and pour off extra.
So, we're back a couple days later. You can do it within a few hours once it's solid. In the case of these really small bars, they're, they're pretty solid very fast. But then they just kind of pull out. You can see I'm just rolling them out of the mold. And that's all, I, all the little work I have to do. This one has a little edge, so I'll snap it off. And uh, I use them for other various purposes. Normally I just throw them back in the crock pot when they're these tiny little pieces. But with this one, I'm going to go ahead and take the rubber bands off that I used to hold it tight. I got my little stick up here. You can see that I poured a little high. That's okay, because then it's normally flat still. Um, and we got the uh, chopstick stuck in there. But you can also see that this is where the seam is. So I'm going to go ahead and roll my thumb down and pull it off. Tilt it. And just go all the way around to loosen the mold. And then once it's loose, this has like a little B on this side, so you got to make sure you got it loose around the B. So it's a little more work than some others. There you go. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just chop it just a little bit from the tip. I'm going to chop this end off. And then I'm going to clean up the edges. So just wherever you see like little white powdery stuff, generally it wipes away. That's just little flex that got moved around because you're pulling it out of something. But um, yeah, otherwise, otherwise that's how you put it together.